Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel P Talk. And in this short video, we will discuss about a web server and application server. And what is the difference between web server and application server? So exact agenda of this uh, session is what is web application? What is a web server? Uh, what is an application server? For example, we have a WebLogic server from Oracle and WebSphere from IBM. Okay, and JBoss and many, many application servers are there. And then we'll see what is the difference between web server and application server because uh, many of the engineers are get confused. Uh, uh, what is the difference between web server and application server because it looks like the same. Okay, uh, but yes, there is a huge difference when we talk about uh, the functionality of web server and application server. And then when we have to identify uh, where we have to use the web server, where we have to use the application server. Okay, so what exactly is a, a web application? Okay, so a web application is an application accessible from the web using HTTP or HTTPS. Very simple, whatever the application that you access using your browser, when you access your browser and you try to hit some URL there in your browser, okay, and then you enter it with HTTPS or maybe with HTTPS, which is a secure protocol, okay. So all the websites that you access using your web browser is is these are the applications right uh, and developed in certain web languages or and, and which you can access over the internet so whatever the applications that you are accessing over the internet using your web browser is called an web application because you are accessing the, accessing it over the web okay so whenever you uh, access any url okay over the web okay that that request is executed in your web server okay and then you get the response back Okay, for example, you are accessing some website uh, like google.com. Okay, whenever you enter google.com in your web browser, so google.com it reach to the web server of Google and from there it serve you the front page that you see when you enter the google.com on the browser. Okay, and some of the common web development languages are HTML, CSS, Java, JavaScript, Python, PHP, Net and Angular. There are a lot of other languages as well as of today, okay? But these are the certain popular uh, web development languages, okay? Used by many developers across the world for development of uh, web applications. Okay, now, so what is a web server? So web server is a computer program that delivers content such as web pages, static and dynamic, using the hypertext transfer protocol HTTP over the World Wide Web. It's a very straightforward definition that, so web server is a computer program, okay, that deliver the content such as web pages, right, dynamic and static. So we'll see what exactly is dynamic and static here, okay, in the next slide, okay. Uh, but to understand in a basic way, okay, uh, as you can see in the figure as well, okay, one of the user is trying to access some website from his own uh, personal PC and then, from there, with the help of internet, it reached to the web server, which contain your all the web pages, and then it get displayed in front of you, right? So web server is a kind, a kind of a software, which is running on a server of the uh, provider, okay? So provider means that if you are trying to access google.com, that means Google is the uh, service provider for google.com application. And when you hit google.com on the web browser, it reach to the web server of Google, and from there, it displays the web page in front of you. Okay, so web server is, you can say it is a small software, which is running on the some, uh, some server of the web, uh, that uh, web application service provider. So now let's see what is the uh, difference between static and dynamic, okay? When we talk about a website is a static or a website is a dynamic, okay? And uh, when we discuss about the different capabilities of a web server and application server, okay? That dynamic and static create a huge difference when we talk about the web server and application server, okay? So a static web server uh, or stack consists of a computer hardware with an HTTP server software. We call it static because the server send its hosted files as it to your browser. So a static web server, okay, or a stack consists of a computer hardware with an HTTP server software. So HTTP server is also referred to web server, okay. So sometimes uh, web server is also referred as HTTP server, okay. Then why we call it static? Because whenever we access any website over the internet, okay, so it is 
displayed in front of you as it is exist on a particular server okay that means uh, for example uh, uh, whenever we access any website of a news agencies okay so those are the dynamic uh, those are the static contents okay so like someone has written some news in a in a file and that file is placed on the web server and that you are accessing over the internet so whenever you access that that uh, uh, that newspaper website right over the internet okay that content is static that is not going to be changed okay if it is going to be changed then some uh, some author in the background may change the content okay and then it will again save on your web server and that file once it is updated by someone it will be displayed in front of you right so that is all like kind of a static contents which is delivering in front of you as it is placed on the web server okay so when we talk about a dynamic web server okay or the dynamic request or dynamic web pages so a dynamic web server consists of a static web server plus extra software okay so what we are saying apart from static web server or the static functionality there is a plus extra software when we talk about a dynamic web server and the most commonly an application server and a database so what else apart from a static web server there are more two components are there one is called the application server and second is called database okay so we call it dynamic because the application server updates the hosted files before sending content to your browser via the http request so what does it mean uh, in the first line above, what we have learned is that a static web server serves the content in front of you as it is deployed or placed on a web server. But when we talk about a dynamic web server, that means the web pages that is getting displayed in front of you, it is a dynamic. That means it is generated at the runtime when you access the website. Okay, It is not like a static content which has been written and then it is placed on a web server. So whenever you are trying to access a web server page, uh, then it is displayed in front of you by executing certain kind of a logic in the background okay and then it get displayed in front of you so that is called a dynamic uh, dynamic web page okay and that dynamic web pages get generated with the help of uh, uh, two more component one is application server and second is database okay so database where you have a data application server which act or which work on top of your web server to enhance or to give you certain extra functionalities. Okay, we'll see in the last slide. So the term dynamic means that the server processes the content or even generate it on the fly from a database. That means when I'm talking about the dynamic web pages, that means the server is processing the content. It is not like a static where it is placed on the server and that it is just displayed in front of you. Whenever you hit a website, which is you can say as a dynamic website, Okay, or maybe you are accessing a page which is a dynamic web page. That means whenever you access a page, there is some processes happen in the background to generate that web page before displaying in front of you. And it could be possible that that dynamic content taking the data from your database and then it is generating the website for you or web page for you. Right. So, for example, uh, when uh, to produce the final web page used in the browser, the application server might fill an HTML template with content from a database. So, you know that HTML is a very standard uh, notation for development of uh, the HTML, your web applications. Okay. And then, when we talk about a, an HTML template, that means you have designed a, a template. Right, with the help of HTML application. And then whenever someone access a page, you just take the content from somewhere, like it is in database or maybe in certain files or place somewhere. And then you take that content, you build that template in the HTML template at the runtime and then display in front of users. Right. For example, I uh, you have a website like MDN and Wikipedia are there, right? So you, there are a lot of contents in the Wikipedia, but when you access the website, is that the the initial display of the website is saved. That means the design of the website is same, but the content will be different, right? Based on the content you are looking for and you are searching. So in that case, a single template is designed in HTML, okay? And whenever any user try to hit search for any content, look for any content, okay? That content is placed somewhere, maybe in the database, giant database, or maybe somewhere in some, some different forms. And whenever a user access a website, okay, that content, it populated from the database in the HTML template, and then it displays in front of you, right? So that make the the development and maintenance of e website easier because you have to maintain only few templates, right? And but yes, you have to maintain a huge database of content, and then that content from the databases get populated in your HTML template, and then it displays in front of you.
okay so now but if we talk about an application server now okay so application server right that is more than static and dynamic web pages so so far we have discussed about the static contents and the dynamic contents and the static and dynamic web pages okay so when we talk about application server so it is more than static and dynamic web pages okay so what does it mean it provide infrastructure for enterprise business requirement okay so enterprise business requirement is about now because we are in a digital world where the business organizations are running their business across uh, the world or maybe in a, or within a country okay where they have a multiple uh, multiple uh, business owners they have a multiple stakeholders they have a multiple interconnected departments multiple interconnected stores multiple interconnected warehouses multiple uh, other uh, partners okay and they are all are communicating with each other in a digital world at the real time by exchanging the data right and all the organizations those are interacting with each other in the digital world they may be using a different softwares different hardwares different protocols right so maybe a different technologies okay and when we talk about a world where multiple users multiple stakeholders are communicating with each other by using different kind of a stack different kind of a software different kind of a hardware at the real time uh, by connecting with each other with the help of technologies that is called an enterprise business world okay so an application server is applicable or it is required is mandatory required uh, to support an enterprise business applications right and why we need enterprise business applications because you need high availability scalability maintainability transactions security persistence messaging legacy or non java component interoperability support of ldap servers xml and web service right so <clears throat> i'm sure you are aware about this content okay so when we talk about the high availability scalability maintainability that means when you have a, a website like a facebook okay which has a millions of users accessing the website across the world at the same time that means we have to maintain the performance of the website we have to maintain the availability of your website you have to maintain the scalability of website suppose today you have a 1 million of users of web facebook and tomorrow it could be 1.5 million or 2 million that means you have to make your system scalable right so that you can scale your system if your user base is getting increased so it's this is not a case about only facebook you can take the example of any financial institute website you can take the example of any e-commerce website right the user base of all the organizations are getting increased day by day they all are involving in digital technologies they are all adapting a lot of different different technologies all the softwares hardwares of the digital worlds are getting integrated with each other right and that means we all are connected with each other we all are using the digital technologies that means we all are involved in the digital transactions and there is no limit the number of transactions we are doing on daily basis and obviously when we are doing a digital transactions over the internet and public network we need the security we need the persistence we need to the sum of the data we need the messaging that means one once our data is flowing from one application to different applications then there has to be certain technologies required in between and uh, to store the messages and then certain capable servers are required which can read the messages from the messaging applications dynamically at the runtime or maybe at the in a batch processing or maybe maybe at the some certain real times okay and yes definitely because as i said in enterprise world uh, we are using a different kind of a software hardware and then different kind of a programs developed in different languages so that means you need a compatibility between the latest technologies and the old technologies as well right and then we need the ldap servers like for authentication whenever we go for uh, to access any website right we enter our username and password okay and then after giving the username and password there are a lot of things happen in the background like authorization and authentication like uh, once your user is get authenticated okay there would be some policies in behind where you are uh, it we check like the, the application that you are trying to access if you are really authorized for the application or not that is called authentication and then authorization and then a the lot of web services are there those are uh, uh, used to integrate the different applications in the enterprise world for the exchange of data right and apart from that many more things are there so when you need all of these things for your applications like you need a functionality which is more than static and dynamic and uh, like high availability scalability maintainability you have higher transactions you need a higher security you need a persistence of messages you need a messaging application you need some support of legacy application you need some naming and directory servers like ldap servers okay and then you need an application server okay so web server and application server and application server can act as web server as well right it has a functionality of both web server and application 
server, but yes, it has a lot of more functionalities which require to execute your business logic. Okay. Okay. Now, see when so when we talk about we need to serve some static HTML or maybe certain JSP kind of a dynamic small dynamic web pages, then you need a web server. Right. But when you need a server for your infrastructure for enterprise business requirement, okay, like security, transactions, persistence, distributed component, web services, LDAP servers, and messaging, right? In that case, you need an application server. Right. So thank you for watching this video and don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe for the channel. Thank you very much.